Have you ever been naughty? You have, haven't you? Children are naturally naughty and evil, and that is why we have nannies. Nannies are important because nannies are what separate children of good breeding from the lower classes. Why are the lower classes such degenerate work-shy scum? Because they don't have nannies. The logic is inescapable. Tonight's tale of uplift and moral improvement begins in a house not unlike your own. Unfortunately, the little boy who lived there was a very, very naughty little boy. You see, little Master Thomas was rude to his nanny. It was not long before Master Thomas's rudeness turned into a, something else. <coughs> yes, young Master Thomas became a violent child. Nannies would stay and look after him for a while, but Master Thomas was determined to get rid of them all. And fortunately for him, his parents would always take his side. If any nanny should dare to complain about him, well, out of the door she went. Quite correctly, they took the word of their son over any commoner. And still the nannies came. And when? Until eventually, the agency sent a message to Thomas's parents. There were no nannies left. No more nannies? Damn their impertinence! Don't they realise he's just sensitive? Indeed, my dear. However, the question remains, who is to look after the boy? One can hardly be expected to rear it oneself. Of course not. Oh, Phineas, Thomas is driving me mad! Oh, do something! What can I do about it? Leave me alone for five I say, what's this? What the devil? What is it, dear? Well, listen to this. The Bobbins Agency. Sole client, Nanny Bobbins. A nanny for all your needs, reasonable rates, no child too naughty, no position refused. Just telephone Museum 592 and Nanny will come. Always. Always. Balderdash, it's a damned tradesman's confidence trick. Museum 592? No, it's all stuff and nonsense. Perhaps. But we must have somebody. Anybody. Museum 592, please. Oh. Bobbins Agency? Hello. This is Mrs. Ann. Oh. Hello. What I'd like to ask if you... Oh, really? Oh, that's soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Well? She's on her way. Really? I'll bet you five guineas she... Ah! Oh dear, did I hurt you? Nanny Bobbins, at your service. These are my references. I think you will find them sufficient. You called and I came. I always do. Always. Now, we'd best get you upstairs and cleaned up. If you'll excuse me, sir, madam. Well, Nanny Bobbins certainly made a quick impression, did she not? Off she went upstairs to clean the nasty blood from Thomas's face. There, nice and clean. Ready for your medicine. I hate medicine. Don't want none. Oh, oh. a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Ah! What's that? Nanny Bobbin's box. 
thoughts, your deliverance. When I decide the time is right. When you obey me in all things, then you shall open it. When you obey. Now, we must clean up this mess. Cleaning's for girls. There's a good girl. Master Thomas did not sleep too well that night, I can tell you. The very next day, he was presented to his parents. Yes, very good. See you tomorrow, Thomas, four o'clock. Phineas, tomorrow is the weekend. Oh, I know. Um, Monday, then. Thank you, sir. No? I must say, Nanny Bobbin seems to be doing young Thomas the world of good. His sensitive nature seems to have matured considerably. Mm, of course, it was my idea. Oh, yes, without a doubt. In fact, I was wondering whether or not we might consider a second little son. Oh, Nanny Bobbins was a splendidly robust example of the perfect nanny. But Master Thomas had not managed to terminate the employment of 17 nannies by giving in to them. Yet, in this 18th instance, Try as he might, Master Thomas could not get the better of Nanny Bobbins. No, Master Thomas just could not get the upper hand. Ready, Master Thomas? It looked as if matters would continue in this vein and Master Thomas would soon learn to be a proper little boy and to do as he was told. Until one particular night in Master Thomas's bedroom. No, please, not the three gollywogs. Hush, no gollywogs. Not tonight. What? It is time. When I first came to this house, I found a boy who wouldn't obey Nanny. Is that now the case? No, I obey. I obey. Then you may open the box. I am the greatest Nanny in the world. I have never failed. Obey me now, and you are cured, and I will leave. Disobey and you will never be rid of me. That's all you have to do, Master Thomas. Now close the box. Close the box. Bye-bye, Nanny. Good old Nanny Bobbins. Good night, darling. Americans 
must claim flying a machine. Nonsense, say British scientists. I say, young man, where's Nanny Bobbins? Gone. So shut your fat mouth. <laughs> Back to the old ways. <laughs> what shall we do? He's a monster! I don't know! Oh, come back, Nanny Bobbins! Please come back! <laughs> Master Thomas reveled in his new freedom. Come the evening, oh, he thought himself quite the dandy. And then the darkness came. Yes, the night came, and a blanket of silence fell heavy over the young boy's room. Not a sound could be heard as the household snapped, and not a creature stirred, until... <laughs> what could it be? now, my boy. For all of the inconvenience he had brought upon his parents, young Master Thomas was going to pay. For every night, as darkness closed in, when Thomas's eyes were shut tight, Nanny Bobbins would come. Forever. Ow! And ever. Ow! And ever. <laughs> Ever. Ow! So ends our tale. Remember, children, always obey your nanny, or you might find yourselves a little too familiar with dear old Nanny Bobbins. <laughs> <laughs>